believe my name is Rafael Casas. I'm here with ISM, a consultant with ISM and in support. Um, brief history with me, I was actually a senior support analyst with uh, SAGE, Mass Sunny, Mass 200, at, with SAGE for almost six years. And I was actually able to be part of the team to um, bring in SAGE Mass Intelligence uh, when it came into SAGE as our product, replacing things as F9 and FRX and other reporting financial tools. What we're going to go over today is some basics and essentially high level of SAGE Mass Intelligence and what it can do and, and the, uh, the possibilities that we'll have with SAGE Mass Intelligence by installing it. A couple of things that we want to do with after completing this session is be, form, be form more familiar with SMI, Sage Mass Intelligence, understand the functionality and productivity of it. Now, for those of you that are, may not be aware, I've never seen Sage Mass Intelligence or played around with it. Essentially, what is over here is a financial reporting tool which uses an ODBC connection. Uh, essentially, ODBC connection. If you're not aware of what that is, it's the ability to bring it's an outsourced, outsourced database connection, which allows you to bring data from Mass 90 into Excel or uh, Access. There's several different ways to use that, but that's what Sage Mass Intelligence uses. Um, if you've done that before, pulling raw data from Mass 90, you can create a data source name and and pull it in the, the raw data using an ODBC connection. It's uh, integrated directly with Microsoft Excel. So if you're very familiar with Excel, then this may be a really good product for you because of the fact that everything is just based off of Excel. If you have someone within the office that is an Excel guru, they can come in and manipulate the actual data that's being brought in from Sage Mass Intelligence and, and mold it to your liking as well from with anything that's in canned reports. So in this specific um, window here that you'll see with Sage Mass Intelligence, it kind of shows the workflow process of how Sage Mass Intelligence works. You'll have a database, which our database will be essentially the ProvideX database, um, which would be Mass 90 or Mass 200. And then you have a connector. This connector essentially <laughs> defines the database you uh, are connected to. It defines the there will be a container along with that in the connector that defines the data that you have made available on reporting. Now with the connector license, this will also, and I'll touch on this a little bit later, but this will also allow us to consolidate between different companies to create consolidated reports. Then you have the reporting manager, which the connector will flow the data into the reporting manager, which we'll be able to define fields, filters, parameters, and sort the criteria to make the report the way you want it to be. And once it comes into Report Manager, it gets filtered in once you generate the report into Excel workbooks, where then you can further manipulate the data. And you can see the report as it stands. And I'll be able to show you that as well. So there were components are the data container, the report creation and properties, and the data output to Excel. Now with the Sage Mass Intelligence, there's again the connector, the report manager, the report designer, and we'll take a look at the basics of what those are. And the, the connector is the main purpose of the connector is to create and maintain links to the data to, to your data sources. An example would be the Access database or any other ODBC compliant database, which in our case would be the provided database, which would be Mass. Report manager allows us to create and maintain the reports within Sage Mass Intelligence that are linked to Excel. Now it is important to note that the connector is something that does not come stand with Sage Mass Intelligence. You do have to actually purchase that to be able to consolidate uh, reports or consolidate companies and create, uh, create those high level comparative and consolidated reports. Then within the report designer, this is an add-in built-in for Excel. This will give you even more functionality than the report designer from the raw data within Excel to be able to massage it in, in as well. It has drag and drop functionality of fields, a formula builder that gives you the option and ability to create additional calculated fields within Excel. The designer makes reporting much more simple and flexible and fast and, and uh, as well as 
the what if analysis within the designer allows you to change sets of values to, to, to be able to see the impact it has on the rest of the data, use it, useful for essentially forecasting, budget forecasting. That's a great tool that the designer offers. And we're going to go back into how reports can get or get created within Sage Mass Intelligence within SMI. The process, and this links back to the very initial prompt that we were showing you of, of going through the connector and going through the, the report manager and getting fed into Excel. The pr process of creating a report requires that the Sage Mass Intelligence connector is installed to create a connection to the data source which would be our mass database. The report manager is then used to create the report and link it to the Excel template. And I'll show you that here in a second. The following figures will, that you'll see here, it'll summarize the entire process of creating a report using the connector and the report manager module. So number one within the database administrator tool, connect to a data source, it adds the container, then it adds the expression, and then within report manager, it adds the folder and adds the report sets the report properties and, and at that point it's running the report and it links to a workbook. So I'm going to go move away from this screen and we're going to pull up Sage Mass Intelligence. This is essentially what it will look like when we open it up. I'm going to go back to our very beginning and we'll notice here I created a shortcut to be able to see it. You can actually also create shortcuts within your Mass 90 toolbar to allow you to open up the Sage Mass Intelligence. So within Report Manager, the first thing that we'll do is you'll notice you'll receive a prompt, somewhat like a prompt within Mass90. When you do your initial installation, you'll be able to set your Mass90 directory. It'll ask you to put in your company code and your user code. Now you'll have it also a repository, report repository, which is it's a share that you want to create. And this allows you to have this share be put on a server for backup purposes and so if workstations will go down that the information and the specific things that you need in Sage Mass Intelligence share folder that you created will be out on the server being backed up. So this is the report repository and this is something that can be compacted as well. It's kind of like with an FRX where it has specification sets, specification sets where the actual report definitions are held. So for instance if you have a lot of reports and you seem to have runtime errors or runtime issues, Mass, Sage Mass Intelligence has the ability for us to compact it to let the, have those issues not occur any longer, for it to continue to run, as well as this new version within Sage Mass Intelligence has cleaned up a lot of performance issues. When it first came into inception with, when I was working with it, it did have issues with it being very slow in performance. Those have all been taken care of, and, and that's uh, been a big plus as far as a lot of, if someone has a lot of general ledger detail data, that would make, that made, used to make it a really big issue. Now when we run our reports, we can go into financials. You'll see as well that this allows you more than one module. It allows you through financials, inventory, purchases, purchase order, and, and sales order. These are the only reports that are available for those modules. Um, within the financial reports, an easy way we can look at here, since it runs off of Excel, you can do, you can highlight financial reports. You can at that point either hit Control R or right click, and you can run the report. Now it's, it's, it's going <laughs> to run off a of cache within Excel. So it, here you can actually choose, let's move this down here so you can see it, the parameters. You can hit the look up button and you'll be able to choose specific parameters of the fiscal years. So in this case, I'll choose 2010. Then we can choose a budget code. And we'll choose original. Now we've entered our parameters, we can choose OK. And this is essentially how it executes the in real time the reports into Excel. So as you notice, it's running through the query and running through the data files. Now what this does is once it's running through the data, and it will run through that database completely every single time. It's not going to necessarily skip files. It will run during runtime, and that's actually very helpful because if you've added data in Mass, you've added data um, or added new accounts, 
this will auto-populate that. Certain times within FRX, if, for instance, you had put in a brand new account number, that account number may not show up in FRX, and we'd have to del delete and manually rebuild the GL indexes. This doesn't have that issue, so which is a uh, which is a good uh, good process with it. You know, you can here you can see there'll actually be an instruction menu which will show you if it's signing the GL account groups, reporting groups, essentially the account structure. You'll have to do it uh, within here and save it, so you don't have to do it again. But this gives you instructions of how this will work. We can go into the lookup, and you can uh, essentially see the raw data that's been populated in here. You'll see the period one opening balances, the actuals, budgets in prior year. And this will allow you to see the actual data in its raw format. And again, if you have someone or if you feel that you're very savvy, you can all this the best thing to do essentially, for instance, if you wanted to roll up accounts, roll up accounts to the main account, you would have to do that, massage the data with functions and calculations within Excel. A lot of that is done within Excel. It doesn't necessarily come out. Uh, most, A lot of times it doesn't come out with that calculation already done in those can reports. So it's very good if you're very familiar with Excel, this will allow you to modify and massage all the data and to do what you wanted to do. And then we'll look next at managing reports within SageMass Intelligence. A managing reports is done really through Report Manager and that allows us creating and linking your reports, which is the core function within that, that section. Um, around these core functions are a number of, uh, number of functions to facilitate managing your reports. In this section we're going to go over right now, it will help you familiarize yourself with these within the function of being able to delete a report. You're able to delete reports within Report Manager that you may not need anymore, that are obsolete. Um, you have the choice of deleting the report, uh, as well as deleting the associate, associated template. And this should only be done as well, deleting that if you're done and, are, and you're sure that the template has no value and it's not going to be in use anymore. So you have the ability to do that, as well as link and unlink templates. You're able to do that within Mass90 or within SMI. This is necessary if you want to link a different template to a different report. So that's why as well you want to make sure that that template is not deleted. That way you can link it to other reports. You'll be able to lock a report as well after you've completed it. This allows a, an underlying security that allows you that there are no changes to be made to the structure of the report, which is also helpful. And you know, there's a lot of times, even when in previous products like FRX or F9 where someone can go in and, and change a report and not know, other users may not know how or what had happened to that report, and sometimes they have to restore the sysdata folder from a backup. This is good to lock the report, that way you don't have that issue happen. You have the ability as well to export and import reports, You'll be able to export reports from SMI and these reports can be imported into another Sage Mass Intelligence system. So that will actually allows you to move, if you're, for instance, if you're just moving from one server to another and you want to move those reports over, we can export them out and import them back into the new server. As well as you have the ability to schedule a report run. For instance, if any of you have Visual Integrator, for instance, you're able to schedule tasks. Or you, within MassNet, you're able to schedule tasks. You're able to schedule a run to report, uh, run a report, and and so if you need a report that's very big or large and you don't want anything to be bogged down during business hours, you can schedule that report to be run after hours. Now, there is the report designer that we had talked about, and we're going to go over that a little bit about uh, some frequently asked questions within report designer and that have come across from clients and from the inception of Sage Mass Intelligence and what actually is report designer. Report does report designer work with Excel 2003. When this came out, there was a, a lot of people were still using that, but it, report designer only works with Excel 2007 and as well as 2010. Now it's also um, important to know 
that um, force if it does support it should actually it does support 64-bit machines there's another product out there F9 that doesn't support 64-bit machines so the there's issues with ribbons and there's ways there's specific ways as well that we need to get specific ribbons and and uh, to get into 2007 and 2010 because of how they're designed. So 2007 and 2010 are those that are supported. And the reasoning being it uses embedded XML files, the ribbon in Excel, and the VSTO, which is not supported by Excel 2003. Those are the main reasons why it was designed for 07 and 10. When using designer to create a report, am I able to send this report to other people to view? And yeah, the answer is yes. You'll be able to view layouts that you've generated if you save the workbook with a generated layout as an Excel workbook. So that's great as well. You'd be able to do that and send it the actual workbook to a client or or to internally so someone else can use it because everyone essentially does have Microsoft Office in their workstations and can utilize that by reviewing those Excel. Uh, however, you, the other user will not be able to generate reports if they do not have report designer license on their workstation. Now with the licensing as well, kind of going into that, every workstation will have their own specific license. So you can't, like for instance in FRX, you could have one user license and you can technically install FRX on 10 different workstations but only one person could be in it at a time within report designer or sage mass intelligence. It writes embedded into the registry, so you actually cannot install. It won't. It won't let you install that on several different workstations with the same registration number that only has one user license. So what you would end up having to do is delete the actual workstation and the user license from the workstation that it had it on before, and add it on to another workstation. Does Report Designer allow you to create graphs? And it does allow you to create graphs using standard Excel functionality that links to your layouts. And how is the designer licensed? The Report Designer module is licensed per site. All users that have either a Report Manager or a Report Viewer license will be able to run Report Designer reports if they have the Report Designer module activated. <laughs> That's just kind of going back to what I was saying with regards to the report designer having to be specifically licensed per workstation. How do you install Report Designer? It all, it's automatically installed with Sage Mass Intelligence if, you're, if you are licensed for the Report Designer. <laughs> that means when you actually put in your license information within Report Designer, just like you would within Mass90, whatever modules you've purchased and made it knows through registration because it does a validation to the actual Sage Mass Intelligence website to validate what you own and what you what you purchased. Do I have to have SMI to run on the designer or can I purchase it standalone? And again it's Sage Mass Intelligence and the designer. The designer is actually a module or a portion piece uh, within designer. So you have to have Sage Mass Intelligence. You can't have one without the other. And can you copy designer reports and it's that's going to be the same functionality as, as anything else you would do within Report Designer, or without with or without Report Designer, with any state mass intelligence report. And then, as well as consolidating reports, is that an is that a possibility within Designer? You would be able to select the console finance report designer, which will prompt you to select your companies required for consolidation. So if you have ABC or XXX. It'll all it'll be able to do that. I can show you what that looks like as well. But you also want to make sure that this report delivers a GL account suffix with the company code so that a user can identify which accounts belong to which company. I know when this initially came out, people were not necessarily sure what that what was going on there, but that's by design. That's why Sage Mass Intelligence had designed that. So you'd be able to see the differences and what it was coming from. Can you what it looks like, you see that was actually put on there twice, apologies. But what, we'll, what I'll do is I'll actually go in, we'll go into Report Designer here. Now you'll have the console financial reports. This one here will actually allow you to choose what database to choose. And generally in this 
case I only have one company in here, but you'll see several different companies in here, and you can choose them all for, for consolidation of a specific report. And then you'd be able to either hit the Run button up here, or you can run the report right-clicking, as well as running the report itself. Now you can also copy the reports as we were just talking about. You can copy the report and paste it in here, and you can rename it. So that way you can choose one of those reports you have, and it's just a CAN report, and you can modify it and make it to your own liking, calling it ABC Distribution Financial Report. And you would run it the same way as well. And this one I don't think it's going to look a whole lot different because I'm not using more than one company for this, but this will allow us to choose as it queries our database and our years, our budget codes. And then we'll have it execute. And you'll notice here the template template location. It's going to be on that shared drive that you would want to have as well when you create that shared drive on the server. You want to make sure that that share is for everyone to be able to access that, that they have full read and write and full control essentially to that that template and not if they're using and linking back, otherwise they'll get some errors. So as you kind of see the status scene of creating the workbook, setting the workbook properties, and writing the parameters. So it gives you a rundown instead of just a normal toolbar that goes through and you're not sure what it's actually doing. So this is also helpful as well to see how far it's going within the report. And at the bottom here, you'll also see when it was launched in the runtime of the report. And this is helpful as well. And it was very helpful in the very beginning of the inception of this as well, because certain reports that took 10 minutes, 13 minutes, it was much quicker after the new version had been created. So we'll have it. It looks like it's already coming up here. And you'll notice here how quick it's being brought up. But it allows you with the consolidated financial reports, you're able to see all of these different types of reports, income statements and balance sheets, and for different formulas and different formats. So this is helpful as far as can reports that you would that you wouldn't necessarily see within Mass90 itself. And you can rename them as well if you, for instance, in that case, I could have changed the name to something else, that uh, anything else that I would want to do. So it gives you the ability to customize it. And this is a report that's been generated. So at this point, it was just a, we're just a basic functionality of of working with Sage Mass Intelligence and the report designer and the functionality, and, and really just a high level of what it can do and what are the, the possibilities that can work for you. And then our last, uh, as you'll see here, we have some additional training courses that'll actually help you dig in a lot deeper within Sage Mass Intelligence or Sage Mass Intelligence. Essentials course, the Sage Mass Intelligence uh, installation course, as well as the in Sage Mass Intelligence Jumpstart. These are three out there that are very well written and, and we'll dig in a lot deeper as well. I actually have that I can email you. Also, if you when you, if you send me an email, I can send it to you. That I actually have the functionality of all the Sage Mass ninety Mass Intelligence report designer and, and there's actually things that you can use as far as exercises to help you learn how to use it better. But again, it's a great tool because of the fact that it's not a major install. It's not taking up a lot of resources within Mass or within your your server or your workstation for that matter. And it runs directly off of your Excel. So the major positive for that is if you're using Excel and you have someone that's very, very comfortable and very well versed using Excel, 
that they'll be able to massage that data when it comes out in the way that it comes out in the way that you've generated the report. So if, if you would like anyone, if ever anyone that's on the call, send me an email. Any questions you have, feel free to answer them, as well as any documentation, any, any further documentation you'd like. I can send that to you. That'll dig a lot deeper than this high-level presentation of SageMass Intelligence.